Greetings my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today my topic is no to wrath, no to anger and no to vengeance. Because all these things do not belong to the Lord. Anger, wrath, vengeance, taking revenge, it does not belong to God. For God wants us to love because our God is love and we are made in his own image and likeness and we too are love. We cannot change that. If we obey God's laws and commandments, we will only love but not hate. Even our enemies we will love. Even the people who persecute us we will love. We will pray for them. Even if our enemies need anything and everything from us, we will give it to them. We will love them. What may come? Because we are made in the image and likeness of God who is love all the time. Love, mercy and compassion. Therefore we say no to anger, no to wrath, no to vengeance. Today we will see from scriptures how we can understand and be that love instruments. In the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. My brothers and sisters, this is amazing. Peter, the apostle on whom the entire church is built, according to Jesus, he said, you are Peter, son of Jonah, Cephas, son of Jonah. You are called Peter. On this Peter, I'll build my church. Though Peter was given that grace, but Peter, just like us, faltered many times, betraying him. Though he had the privilege of walking on the water, though he had seen Lord Jesus in all his glory in the transfiguration, still betrayed just like us we keep believing at certain times and certain times we keep falling but jesus comes back and says peter feed my lamb feed my sheep and now he's feeding us with this word now he's feeding us with this word in first in the first letter of peter saying first letter of peter saying do not repay evil with evil. This is what is feeding us. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with a blessing. Brothers, let us go to the next uh, verse. In Romans, in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 19, God tells us never to take revenge and to leave it to the Lord. Romans chapter 12 verse 19. Saint Paul, who was a strict Pharisee, obeying the Mosaic law to its core, persecuting the church, all who claimed to be Christians followers of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was revealed to him, he understood what love is all about and how one has to shed all anger, vengeance, all forms of violence, but everything to be done in love. And he tells, no revenge. You cannot take revenge on the person who accuses us or who persecutes us. Rather, believe that the revenge is of our God. He would take care of that. Our duty is to only love. Now Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 15. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Exactly what Peter experienced, Paul is experiencing the same thing here. He is writing in his first letter to the Thessalonians, do not repay wrong by wrong, but bless them, be good with them, so that try to establish that love that everyone should experience God's love through us. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. 
That's the beautiful, this is the prayer Jesus taught us. When we pray, we pray, Father, forgive the sins and trespasses. My trespass. Before we say that, forgive. We, in the Our Father prayer, we say that. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others who have sinned against us. So we first seek our pardon for our sins. Telling God who is truth that we have forgiven the other person. So we can't keep any hatred within us. Any kind of revenge, feelings of vengeance within us. Any kind of wrath within us when we pray to God. We have to be pure and suffer all persecution handing over to God and be that instrument of love. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another to be of one mind, live in peace, and God of peace will be with you. My brothers and sisters, there is so much of divisions, so much of polarization happening around us. So many religions, so many faiths, so many beliefs, so many logical reasoning, so many rationals for their beliefs, atheism and asking proof for God's existence. But here we have a beautiful message from St. Paul to the second letter of, in the second letter to the Corinthians. He wants everybody to be the brothers and sisters. Rejoice and strive for full restoration. Encourage one another, be of one mind and live in peace and God of peace will be with you. When we accept every human person on this planet, God of peace will be with us. Now in the second letter of Thessalonians, chapter 1 verse 8, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, a Pharisee, a strict mosaic law follower, tells very clearly, distinctly, that he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, it is not our duty to show our wrath, our anger, or take our avenge or show vengeance. Our job is to only love. The rest will give it to our God. He knows when to punish the weeds of this field. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 35. Here once again, God reveals to Prophet Moses, It is mine to avenge, I will repay in due time. Their foot will slip, their day of disaster is near, and their doom rushes upon them. Do not worry about the enemies, people who do persecutors, who do wrong things, who false accusations. God is seeing every moment of our lives in this planet. Past, present and future, he can see everything at one instant of time. So when he knows that, what we are going through, he has carved each of us in the palm of his hand. When he has done that, we don't have to be showing our anger, showing our wrath, or planning or thinking to revenge. The wrath, is, he will show the wrath. So that's what he tells Prophet Moses, do not worry. You just obey my laws and my commandments. That's all you have to do. And Jesus showed us what are those commandments. Just by giving this to love your God, love your fellow beings. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 30. For we know him who said, it's mine to avenge. I will repay and again the Lord will judge his people. So my brothers and sisters, this is another verse from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 30. For we know him who said, it's mine to revenge. So God says, it's, I will take revenge. I am saving it. I know I am the judge, not you. Your job is only to love. And love God and love your fellow beings. Even if they persecute you, 
even if they harm you, even if they accuse you, whatever they may do. But your job is to love. Now in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18, Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people, but your neighbor, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18. Remember it. Very easy to remember 19, 18 Leviticus. So I am the Lord. I am telling you do not have any kind of grudge against your fellow human being. Do not be jealous or do not be angry or do not show your wrath. Because God is giving us that support and hope. It is mine. The wrath is mine. I will take care of it. Your job is to only love. Love and nothing else but love. Now in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12, Hatred stirs up conflicts, but love covers everything. And brothers and sisters, when we love, even a person, our enemies, if they are against us, that love can change that. And that's what we see in Proverbs. Once again in Genesis Chapter 4 verse 15, we find here when Abel and Cain are offering their first produce, Abel's sacrifice is accepted because he gave everything to God, the best to God. Whereas Cain's was not accepted because he gave what was left over. But then we find because God accepted Abel's sacrifice, Cain, his older brother, just brutally kills him. So God asks Cain, why have you done this? The blood of Abel cries to me. And then God tells him that he has to pay for that crime. But then he also says, the wrath the anger of God is passed on to anyone who kills Cain will have seven folds because Cain had that huge mistake which he did. So anybody who kills Cain will be having the vengeance take seven folds on Cain. Now we look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 43. For he will avenge the blood of the servants. So whenever God's servants are killed, God will take care of them. We find many cases, many preachers have been killed in the past. But those are all servants of God. And even if they don't cry, God will take revenge on them. But it is our duty as preachers of the love of God. We need to forgive even people who hurt us, even to the extent of killing us. Just like Jesus said from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And we can do the same thing. Like we have seen in St. Stephen, the very first martyr in the Christian church. And when Paul was not at a Christian at that point in time was fully approving the stoning of Stephen to death. And Stephen just looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them. for They know not what they do. And then see what change, what transformation happened in Paul. that He became the pioneer, the pillar of Christianity. Now, in Psalm 94 verse 1, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs. So vengeance belongs to God. And we, our job is to only love. Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 14. I will lay my vengeance. God's words. I will lay my vengeance. So we don't have to worry about that. Once again in Micah chapter 5 verse 15. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. Such they have not heard. So God will take care of that. Which they have not even heard. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2 The Lord is jealous and he revenges. He is, he is very jealous for the people who hurt us. 
he is not going to keep quiet. He will take in his own time. He will decide what he, ha he has to do with them. In uh, in J Jude chapter one verse seven, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, how he destroyed, he showed his vengeance. How Sodom and Gomorrah, people who hated God and who did not be obedient to God, though Lot and his family preached to them, nobody obeyed. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. These are the words of Jesus and Jesus showed us till the cross, till the last moment that we need to forgive our enemies. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 20 to 22 if you are, and Even if the enemy is hungry, give food and give the drink, whatever it is. Just because the person is your enemy, do not just go away and let him suffer. If you see your person suffering, even if he is your enemy, give him, give him all the love so that you are going to heap coals on him. And that's what God says here. Now in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 23, when the herd insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 23, when all these people threw insults at Lord Jesus, they said, if you are God, come down and we believe you. But he didn't say that. He said, Father, into your hands, I come in my spirit. So he, Jesus knew that these people did not know because they do not know what they are doing. Their understanding is so little. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. My brothers and sisters, we need to get rid of everything, every form, except love, everything should be taken away. We need to only keep love, mercy and compassion. Because our God is love, mercy and compassion, we have to be like that. When we take out all those things, we are in perfect alignment with our God's will. We keep forgiving and forgetting the persecution, the abuses, the accusations. All those people who disturb us, we will forgive them. We only love them. We pray for them. Luke chapter 6 verse 28 Bless those who curse you Pray for those who mistreat you My brothers and sisters No more revenge, no more avenging We will pray for the people who mistreat us People who abuse us We will surrender to our creator God But we will love our fellow human beings Always with mercy and compassion Matthew chapter 5 verse 39 this is one of the beautiful things God, Lord Jesus taught us. My brothers and sisters, if somebody slaps you on the right cheek, show him in the left. It's not literally showing the right and left, but even if it comes to literally, we can do that. Because we have to bless our enemies, bless the people who hurt us, bless the people who persecute us. But here, if you take it literally, if a person slaps on the right cheek, you have to show the left. But I have seen so many people, so many false prophets. They say, no, that's not possible in the present times. You have to hit back. But that is not, we don't, we do not worry about the person who can kill our body but cannot kill our souls. We believe in someone who can kill both body and soul. And he's the one who's telling us, show your right cheek if somebody slaps on your left cheek. If that is the case, our physical beings, we are not even bothered. We are looking for eternal life. Our physical life is only for a certain period of fixed period of time. But our spiritual life is for eternity. We will focus on the eternal life. Romans chapter 13 verse 4. God's servant, rulers do not bear sword for no reasons. They are God's servants, punishment to wrongdoers. See, the rulers, the punish the people who do not obey the secular world. We find if you are not doing something right, you get punished in the secular and the physical world. But imagine if God's servants are being hurt, how much God is waiting to punish those people. And that's what we see in Paul's letter to the Romans. 
Finally, in Gospel of Matthew chapter 8, verse 21 to 22, Peter comes and asks, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? Jesus tells him 70 times. So it's not seven times, but 72 times. Innumerable times. There's no limit to that. Keep forgiving. Keep forgiving. Keep forgiving. If your brother or sister comes and seeks pardon. And that's what we are. We are made in the image and likeness of God, who is true love. Therefore, no to wrath, no to anger, and no to vengeance. Why, my brothers and sisters, please be with you. Please let me know how you liked it and share your, uh, your comments. And you can always subscribe to my video. Bye now.